What's up, everybody? This is Zach. And Amy. Shad. And Judah. We'll be a light. We hope you've been having an awesome week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to hear that throughout the rest of the episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how was, how was, how was everybody? How's everybody? <laughs> Is everybody's week spins going? Awesome. I already said everything. Though, yeah. So. Well, we can do a quick one, and then we're going to jump into the episode. We've been hanging out for like almost two hours. Yeah. It's oh, been, yeah. Has it been that long? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, quick version. The Lord's good. Things are growing crazy, but... Like, I don't just say the Lord's good, like, secretly. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's not really good, but I'm saying it. <laughs> but, like, the Lord's really good. <laughs> and so everything's going good in my life. It's working everything out. I have unspeakable joy for some reason. Unexplainable peace. Because it's like what his spirit produces. And so I'm just eating from the good produce section now. <laughs> was that the wrong produce section for a while? <laughs> <laughs> the little, little Debbie Owl. <laughs> <laughs> little diabetes. As you, can tell, <laughs> as you can tell, I still eat there, though, so I need to go away from there as well. <laughs> Shad? It's been a solid week. Um, I hired a professional to assemble my computer for me, mm. so my computer is ready to go. Yeah. Um, I hear that it was really good looking, too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, for sure. Thanks, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you came on to him at one point in time. <laughs> 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 Please, <please. laughs> <laughs> Amy already knows. <laughs> um. Um, so that's good. We're moving in that direction. Today I got a text message about um, potential work. Yeah. So that's good. Praise God for that. Um, they're like, hey, I heard you were uh, leaving your job. No. Yeah. <laughs> so text me later, <laughs> and I'll hook you up. Anyways, um, and also this morning, I we've started having judo classes Tuesday mornings. Today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday mornings. It's not judo classes, sadly, but continue. Yeah, yeah that was confusing. I, I don't need like any. I don't need any of those. I don't need any judo classes. It's a judo class. And we learned this throw that's like not allowed in competitions because you can break their arm and just look at their shoulder. Nice. And it was really cool. Why wouldn't they do I love you judo. Self defense. Done it. Just okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> what time Tuesday mornings? And it's in Milton, isn't it, though? Oh, never mind. So that's been my week. It's been good. Cool. Zach. Hello? Oh, okay. Um,. Trusting God, man. That's been that's been the week. And last night was like this cultivation, like this boiling point of like we're gonna trust God with regardless of anybody else. No one's gonna get us from not trusting God. <laughs> and then the rain started coming, so you know, I just just thankful for that and just all the opportunities that are coming our way. I'm just excited. For all of that good stuff. Whoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Uh, it's been a really good week. Um, I know, I can't remember what day it was, but there was a day Zach and I were just talking, and I was like, I really just feel like my confidence in the Lord and what I don't know <clears throat> just my my confidence in him has grown mm -hmm. and like when you were talking earlier about just you know everything mm -hmm. coming every direction and just it's kind of like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> like, and um, I know like this morning I had, I had to do some work related things. And for whatever reason, like I felt 
I don't know, it was just the devil trying to bring this fear on me. <clears throat> and I, it was kind of like, okay, even if I'm, I have felt those things, that's not who I am. And like, I made this phone call and it like, it didn't necessarily go like great, but I still did what I needed to do. And like, I, I've come to realize that there is um, this business Amy that comes up every <laughs> once in a while. And <clears throat> it's like, I don't know, she's the one that's just like, you're going to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, like after I made that phone call, like it, it was just kind of like, it's like, okay, God, even if, fear tries to come on me it's like i can still do this like and i know like it it sounds like an overreaction to a phone call but it was kind of an awkward thing and um people are really awkward about money <laughs> really awkward about money they don't like it when you just take theirs for one <clears throat> well i mean we're providing a service in return but yeah they they don't like it when you just take their money you're saying the service isn't free <laughs> <laughs> what what? You We're just letting you do this for exposure. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you can I, expose me to them dollar bills right <laughs> now because that's what I need exposure to. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, being a musician and now being a videographer and all of that, it's like that is. <laughs> I think uh, with being a musician, it's like it's worse. Yeah, it it's is worse. But. Um, I don't know. It. <clears throat> I've just. Even though there's been some difficult things, that I mean, I feel like we say that all the time, but it's like. Um. You know, we're just exercising that muscle <laughs> of trusting, and um, I don't know. He's just a good father, and. I I feel that and I know that and um yeah 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 oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like if he doesn't do that get me so disappointed <laughs> We'll put the link to what we're talking about in the description <laughs> below, and so you can understand. <laughs> just we're not going to give any context, none at all. So I feel like this thing is oh, it's, it's hot over there. Oh, spicy, spicy. I feel like I need to yeah, pop it down. Yeah, if you'll take the two big dials, the master dials, and just turn them down. We'll edit just a little this bit. moment out. And by we, I mean Zach, because mm. I don't know how to. No, Shad's going to edit it out. Okay. Actually, Shad can yeah, edit it. Yeah, I forgot. Stuff very, very quick. It's good. Um, <clears throat> so last week, me and Judas on, we talked about unity. And Did you call me Judas on? Yeah. Okay, it took me a second. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> uh, we talked about unity, and uh, it, it was a good episode. Yeah. It went like an hour. Like, yeah. It went like our normal yeah. session. <laughs> thought it was going to be like half the time. Yeah. We lied <laughs> yeah. to ourselves. Um, but, you know, we kind of boiled it down to <clears throat> essentially love. Yeah. You know, and we wanted to continue talking about unity, but getting uh, your input. And I've got some scripture that God has given me on uh, unity in the body <clears throat> that. He's like, here you go. And I'm like, oh, thank you, God. And it was just this afternoon. And then he, like, connected it that I needed to use it tonight. But um, so, Chad or Amy, whichever one of y'all wants to go first um, and talk about your thoughts on unity because me and Judah kind of exhausted a little bit. And then we can chime in on what God's revealed to us this week as well. Um, I'm going to skip Amy because I'm rude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have a lot to say. Maybe I do. I don't know. Um, I just figured I'd talk. Um, whenever I think about unity in the Bible, 
like the primary story that I think about is the Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys covered that last week or not. No. No, good point. But like, <clears throat> the scripture said that, and I'm using my words, but as long as they were unified, God said this, as long as they were unified, they could accomplish whatever they wanted. Mm-hmm. So like they, he confused them <clears throat> because somehow, some way, they were going to find a way to heaven. Yeah. Because man, unified can do anything. Yeah. And because we're created in His image. Yeah. Yeah. But we're limited individually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like He created us to need community and to need to work together. And or think about something like crowdfunding mm-hmm. you know like our like <coughs> the church that i go to has been able to like give millions of dollars over the 10 years that it's existed because all those people just unified putting their time and effort and money together can do so much but if you're one person you can only do so much stuff yeah you know? so unity is power that's my opening statement of that was a good one. Love. Um. Well, I was in the other room when you guys were doing the show last week, and I heard bits and pieces, uh-huh. but um, I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't just being weird. <laughs> um. Like, I think for a long time. Um, and I feel like, I mean, the ultimate goal with unity is that, you know, everybody, you know, treats each other with love and, um, I don't necessarily know if it's like all like kumbaya kind of thing, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it's. recognizing how people are different and that their strengths help where you're weak. And um, I feel like especially now where, you know, we're still maturing as the body, like that's really important for us to recognize. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that we have different roles and, um, I was just, because I like Ephesians, um, was thinking on how, like, in Ephesians 4, it's talking about unity in the body, but, (coughs) um, you know, It, it talks about how, you know, we all come from, we're, we're all one body, one spirit, um, you know, there's one Lord, one faith, but he gives each of us special gifts and, um, This is Ephesians 4, verse 7. However, he has given each one a special gift through the generosity of Christ. And, you know, we're all made in God's image, but I think we... God is so expansive, and there's... We are continually learning about him when we each reflect a part, or we show a part of his nature... And (coughs) it's, I mean, like in verse 11, like it's talking about, you know, the gifts or the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. And like, I know there's been times when I'm just kind of like, I don't know where I fit into that. And, um, but it's like, as long as I'm, loving people and willing to come in and serve um 
it says in the beginning of chapter four, always be humble and be gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And I think the as long as we're willing to do that, then you know we can guide each other. Because like I'm still kind of learning about um, how God uses me to speak to other people. It's like um, in like a mentoring type way. Mm-hmm. Like um, like when I think about like the kids in our youth group and you know you feel like you're an adult until you have to teach kids and then you're just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know it's like i i don't want to pretend like i know everything um which a lot of times i have felt like i've needed to do that but that just makes you look like a fool at the end of the day yeah and um you know it's like as long as i'm seeking after christ and i'm coming in and i'm saying i want to be a part of this family that he says that i'm united into and um you know when i do my part in being humble and coming and serving um you know that that's that's all i can really do and I, you know, it's important for all of us to do that. And I feel like that's yeah. kind of an understood thing. But um, when we do that, we can get to the latter part of chapter four. <coughs> um, you know, it was it's saying like, you know, these gifts are given in order to help with growth and maturity. Yeah. Um, and this will continue. This is verse 13. We, this will continue until we all come into such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. We will be we will no longer be like immature children. We won't be tossed and blown around by every wind of new teaching. Um Give it on verse 15. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. And um, God's been talking to me about learning what it really means to be the bride of Christ. And it's like, I can do my part, but I, my part is in helping and serving others. And yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm still learning how to do that for the people in my life. And, um, I know it's, it's easy to get frustrated with people. Um, you know, but I, I try to keep that person in mind, um, you know, make it, make allowance for each other's faults because of your love um because sometimes you know there's personality conflicts there's people just being stupid <laughs> <There's> <laughs> just, or i'm being stupid and i don't realize it in the moment and um it's like but that's not who i am and yeah. you know it's like okay this happened let's let's go forward and um because that's what a family does. They stick together and they yeah. they figure things out. And it's like until we come to that place of full maturity where we are like this one unit bride, um, you know, we have to just love each other through the process as we're growing. Yeah. So. Judah. Um, so what, what part of the verse was, uh, 
because you said, part of it said, the unity of faith and the knowledge of God's Son until uh, we're all knit together in his image, I believe is the rest of the verse. <laughs> um, but that's actually a really good point because, you know, when you say unity, it's a big word. Mm-hmm. You're just like unity. And they're like, yeah, unity, man. For what? Yeah, that sounds like a buzzword. <laughs> yeah. We're unified. How? Yeah. How, how are you and I in unity? Oh, because we believe in you know, tongues and healings and stuff. Okay. No. No. Unity specific in the Bible. Yeah. Unity is with one focus. And our, our focus, what makes us all unified is Christ. Christ. Unity of faith. Unity of faith in the knowledge of God's Son. So our faith and our trust in the knowledge of God's Son. So how are we as a people with different dialects, with different denominations, with different everything going to become unified? In the faith and the knowledge of God's Son until we're knit together in His image. That right there shows me that all these other things are almost useless Mm. to even... If we become unified in the knowledge of God's Son, all those other things will just come in line. Um, Another verse that that came to mind uh, while you were speaking was Colossians 2.2. My goal is that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that you may have the full riches to complete understanding in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. So this verse, and then it says, in whom are hidden all, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I, yeah. So just those two verses, but listen to this. I'll say it again. My goal is that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that you may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Mm-hmm. So what we're united in is knowing Christ. That's confirmed now with two verses. And it's saying if we're united in love, what's going to happen to us? We're going to have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom all hidden are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. So we don't need to come united in anything else but Christ and knowing him. And apparently from what scripture says, Colossians two, three in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then, you know, Romans 12, he touches on a a lot of subjects. There's a lot of scripture I could read. Um, It says, this is Romans 12. Verse 3, for by grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should should think. Instead, think sensibly as, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do have the same function, in the same way we are we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, according to the grace given to us. We have different gifts, and he goes into the gifts and everything. Love must be without hypocrisy and detest evil, cling to what is good, show family affection to one another, brotherly love, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lack diligence, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer, share with the saints and their needs, pursue hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, be in agreement with one another, do not be proud, instead associate with the humble, do not be wise in your own estimations, do not repay anyone evil for evil, try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes, if possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone, friends, do not avenge yourselves, instead leave room for his wrath, for it is written, vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, says the Lord. 
But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you'll you'll be heaping fiery coals on his head. Um, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. I think, you know, all that he just laid out is like a way for us to be unified. It's yeah. almost step by step for things we can do to walk in this unity. Um, you know, like I said, there's so many verses. We can go then to Romans 14, where he begins, it says the, uh, it's literally like they titled it, the law of liberty, but it's like the law of love, really. Um, it says, except ones who are weak in faith, but don't argue about doubtful issues. One person believes you may eat anything, but one is who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on the one who does not eat. And one who does not eat must not criticize the one who does eat, because 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 God has accepted him. Who are you to cri- criticize another household slave before his own Lord? He stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. And then he goes, and then one person considers this day great, and some people consider every day the same. Um, but what he's saying, he just said what I just was saying. All these side issues are exactly that. They're, they're side issues. Yeah. We need to love each other and and continue to grow in that unity and seeing Christ, seeing his image, pursuing it in love. And the way you pursue it in love is selflessness. That's what they explained you know, two chapters before. Um, and we can't be selfless within ourself. You can't. And I hope I can make sense with this. God has to, you know, Mm -hmm. we have to let God live through us. Mm -hmm. We can't try to be selfless. This, we're not going to be able to be in unity by grinning and bearing it. There is no way for us to be in unity by grinning and bearing it. We have to go by his spirit. That means it's up to each person to individually go and to know him. That's why Paul prayed, I pray that you know that have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's why they said in Colossians 2 that you would have the knowledge of him. That's why they said in, I think it's in Ephesians, in Ephesians that you would be together to come to the fullness of the knowledge of him. It's all about him. And we each individually must go and know him for ourselves. He said, you have no need for a man to teach you, for the Lord will teach you. You won't have any need to say no to the Lord, for you'll all know him. Yeah. So we must take that's on ourselves to go before him and to spend that time in relationship taking him i have just in a few days experienced more joy and peace at taking him at his word than i ever did at trying bettering myself and i know that change is going to come in my life because i'm going to take him at his word but i'm not going to take him at his word and walk away from him i'm going to take him with his word Mm -hmm. and i'm going to walk with him i've been telling him the past few days lord Teach me how to follow because you only lead me into all truth. Yeah. I don't find truth without your leading. Yeah. So teach me how to follow you. We have to take him at that word and say, help me to be a follower of you, a disciplined believer. And because he, he told Paul, it pleased God to reveal Christ in me. So it pleases God to reveal Christ in us. Yep. And I want, and like, just like I said, you know, when I saw my spirit, I saw him, this perfect me is already there. And there's a song by Misty Edwards. She says, I don't want to um, live my life. Um, help me with the words. Uh, living on the outside. I want to live from the inside out. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about living from who we truly are. Yeah. Our, our flesh, our outside is not, uh, I could, I don't want to go on a whole other subject. Flesh is not evil, blah, 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 blah. We're not just good in the spirit and like, you know, we're not a creamy center and a rotten outside. Um, <laughs> just saying. Um, but there is a true nature. We have been born again. Mm-hmm. And we are born again. We're not being born again. We're not, it's not a born again process. Yeah. We were dead now we are alive we were darkness now we are light so we have to take him at his word and truly just accept it and like i've been doing seeing situations with my eyes that are not going well in my life or my friend's life or my family's life and choosing to say no you say this but my god says this yeah i'm gonna remain in his peace and i know that's kind of sounds like it's going off trail but the only way to be united is to be individually strong. 
is to each person to have that strength. If one link is weak, it doesn't matter if they're all united. That one part is the breaking point. But that's when now those who are, it then says in 14, those who are strong in faith, don't look down on those who are weak in faith. Mm -hmm. We come along and we encourage them and continue to edify them. So we continue to individually grow, but a mature Christian begins to look outside of themselves and begins to walk in that, you know, even though they might have this knowledge, they lower themselves down here. Paul said, I became all things to all men. He came to their place, their level of knowing. What level of God do you know? Okay, okay. And he would assess that and address them from that place. Yeah. So we too must address those and like, okay, you believe from here. Cool. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> let's foundational, make Jesus the foundation and then work from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just a few things like from everybody speaking that God was showing me. Um, the connector is Jesus. Like I could just see this. It was like, mm-hmm. it was like this huge stream and there was two sides to it. Um, but there was like this huge connector that was in place that the stream had to go to, to get to the other side. Mm-hmm. And that connector was Jesus. Like it, it was, it wasn't, you know, just this little, you know, where it's just like, a little stream coming through it was huge and it was like able to take in the masses because that's what he's built for is you know to save everybody it's mm-hmm. not just you know the one or the two it yeah. was it's for everybody uh it was like this huge power cord i can't can't like mm-hmm. i don't know if it was water or whatever but it was it was definitely like this huge like connector thing and then you were reading about heaping the coals on their head mm-hmm. That uh, people have, I, I can't remember who was talking about it. it. Might have been Stephen Furtick or Tim Mackey. I can't remember, but that actually is not a bad thing. A lot of people take yeah. it as, oh, we're shaming them. You know, we're beating them down. It was for people that lived further outside of the villages. If they weren't able to have coals or whatever or fire, the as they were passing through during coming to the night their neighbors would put coals in their basket like they would have like a basket on their head to that so they would have a fire and everything so it was showing unity through love by giving what would essentially be life at that point would be fire yeah. you know having a fire at night would keep people alive and everything and that's how the body is supposed to be it's supposed to be reaching out to people it's supposed to be heaping that love onto yeah. them it's you know it's this burning desire that man i love you and i want you to you know thrive and survive uh and you know the first you know, for the longest time, I thought that was like yeah. shame them and burn <laughs> them and all of this. No, it's well, it's their <laughs> comeuppance. <laughs> exactly, you know. But it's it's this love factor that is in there where it's like I I'm giving uh, from my coals. Mm-hmm. I'm pouring into you. I want to see you to be successful and on fire for God. And I, I when you read that, I was like, yes, God. That's <laughs> like He quickened that in my spirit. I was yeah. like, yes, that's so good. Um, I, I, w- I want to read from Ephesians 2.14. This is from the Passion. We were reading this earlier, and this goes right with unity and everything. Um, Our reconciling peace is Jesus. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ. By dying as our sacrifice, he has broken down every wall of prejudice that separated us and has now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by crucifixion of his precious, precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been replaced by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by standing over, forming one new race of humanity, Jews and non-Jews fused together. Two have now become one, and we live restored to God and reconciled in the body of Christ. Through his crucifixion, crucifixion, hatred died. 
For the Messiah has come to preach the sweet message of peace to you, the ones who were distant, and to those who are near. And now, because we are united in Christ, we both have equal and direct access. I'll read that again. We both have direct, direct, <laughs> direct. <laughs> We both have equal and direct access to the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. So you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are children of the city of the Holy Ones, with all rights as family members of the household of God. That's good right there. That'll oh, preach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are rising like the perfectly fitted stones of the temple, and your lives are being built up together upon the ideal foundation laid by the apostles and prophets, and best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. That's good. Woot. And like it's all out of love. We're all it goes back to that that connector yeah. it's all through jesus because anything before jesus sacrificing his life we had we had to live through priests and prophets yes. and messengers it was people like us you know everyday people mm-hmm. wouldn't have had that same relationship we would have had to carry sheep and cows and all of this to yeah. to be forgiven for a year it didn't mm-hmm wash it away it just kind of covered and you know it's like when you're cleaning up your room as a kid you'd like hide stuff under your bed or you'd put it all in your closet and close Mm -hmm. it it's like as soon as someone opened it though it's like oh no it comes all crumbling down but through jesus we're going from this dirty water flow if you've ever seen like purifiers like of water like we're going through that big connector and then we're clean yeah. We're like Fiji water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we're... I like Fiji water. It's better than smart water. <laughs> anyway, that that's what we... That connector is like purifying. It's, it's pulling all of that gunk out of our water mm-hmm. and making us clean. And mm, that's just good. That's why, you know, people, when they say narrow is the way... Mm-hmm. Um, they tr- they try to preach it like it's an entire way is narrow. Yeah, but the reason it's narrow is because there's only one way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's one way. Jesus, yeah. it's very narrow. There's not 300 bajillion gods. There is one God. Mm-hmm. There's one Christ. There's one Jesus. There's one door. There's one gate, and it's all Him. Yeah, always and forever will only be Him. Yep. So it is very narrow. And you cannot enter, if you enter by any other way, you are a thief and a yeah. robber. And um, it all comes down to him. And like that's why the Old Testament, the Israelites, they were meant to be a light to the nations. But they were just a symbol of Christ. Yeah. They were one nation. He's one man mm-hmm. and one God. And he represents, you know, in, in Romans again, they talk about the difference between Adam, the first Adam, and the second Adam. And he's like, he, Paul makes it clear, he's like, the only way they're the same is that they include every person. Yeah. Adam, the first Adam, cannot even be compared to yeah. the second Adam. Everyone we see is included in Christ. Yeah. They just don't know it. Some will never accept it. And that's their fault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, almost, so I think that's one of the subject to get into. Um, yeah, it really comes down to just Christ, and that's He's the vi- vicarious man. Yeah, He's the one we live through. He's Paul said, "It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Nevertheless, I live, but it's by the power of Christ that I live." Um, and we need to get that Christ focus again. Well, there's been we've gotten so so many niche, uh, niche or whatever that niche. word is, niche, mm-hmm. uh, teachings that we need to get back to Him, the gospel. We need to just pound, just continually. Paul and Peter both said as they were talking, we we're like, I know we're saying the same thing over and over, but I don't find it tedious to do this. I find it's a safeguard for you. That I continue in this, that I repeat in this, the, the all of the epistles, even Jude, 
in his one little letter, he's like, I was going to write you about this glorious gospel that we have. <laughs> but I, now I feel urged to write you about those liars and deceivers who are wanting to draw you away from the gospel. They've been prophesied since the beginning with Enoch. Yeah. You know, he went all the way back. And he's like, these, these guys, they've been, their judgment has been since the beginning. Um, but it all comes to the gospel. And it's, it, I know it's so simple. And if you take it as a logical subject and take the information and go, okay, you know, I've, I understand this information, but you don't grasp the humanity and the divinity of God yeah. and focus on him. You won't be able to be unified with anyone. Yeah, I'm. I'm remind you brought up Enoch and its relationship, mm-hmm. its relationship with God. Uh, Enoch, he didn't really like start talking to God till he was like sixty five, but for three hundred years he built a relationship with God and walked with Him. Yes. And then one day, God just like, man, I don't want to have to keep coming down here. Yeah. Come on with me, <laughs> you know. And they just kept walking and. It's that relationship. He built that relationship. And we have a much better connection through Jesus to to the Father. We don't have to, you know, work at it. It's already done. We're already connected to God. We are his children through Jesus. And I, I just think people need to realize how much love he has for us. And like that, that's just freeing all together. We need to come back to taking him at his word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at his word, what he said, the promises he's given, everything that he wants for us. I mean, it's innumerable, the thoughts that he has. They're all for our welfare. Um, as I meditate on these things, and you really hear the words of Jesus, and he's like, he, he says, you know, if he feeds the sparrows and dresses the lilies, how much more will he do for you? He, he I love the part where he told the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, you're, you're the father of the devil. But then he <laughs> said, but you have one father who is God. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to go off in too many side subjects, which I think we're trailing that way. Um, <laughs> but that's unity. And mm-hmm. like, I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a third week, honestly. Because there's so many other scriptures I can get to. And I think this is, it, it needs to be fleshed out. Because just like with his, he just said his one church has given so much. And I know of other churches that are small, like maybe 30, 40 people. And they give a lot of money because those people are like, they have one focus and they're all like money, 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 money. <laughs> and another focus, money, money, money. <laughs> they're, yeah. just, they're, they're doing it wisely. But if we all begin to take God at his word, Know and then let have a relationship with him, intimacy with him. We'll become givers and we'll become. If you're a giver, your mindset typically, typically among Christians, <laughs> is not selfish. I'm giving yeah. for people to see me. If you do, the Lord will drop you dead. Um, <laughs> Stone cold stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> but. He is the one who unites us. Yeah. That's yeah. that's actually a really big point to draw this all back around. Yes, we focus on Christ, but we focus on him because he's the one who's then like, okay, come here, fix this, do this, let me make this and this. Okay, I'm fitting you together. I'm the cornerstone. I'm laying the stones. I'm bringing you together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we just sit there and worship him and go, oh my gosh, <laughs> look yeah. what you've done. <laughs> you have anything else? I saw you looking at scripture. Um, no, I just like as you guys are talking, like I just keep thinking like I don't I'm not meaning it to sound like funny or like but it's like Jesus is the great equalizer. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like at the end of the day it's his love, his sacrifice that's freed us yeah. and it's like I'm no better than somebody else yeah. and like I like I I totally agree with what you were talking about it's like we we have to keep it simple yes. and just um you know and 
like even right now like I'm like there's stuff like I feel like God's wanting me to study and look at and it's you know learning about the bride and everything but it's like that being the bride it comes back to you know being the bride of Christ and it comes back to just it it all comes back to that same simple truth and it's like we just we can't forget that because that's you know people we get weird <laughs> we get prideful we get um, frustrated with people who we are trying to um, who you know God is wanting to to graft in and it's like if we aren't you know loving patient kind with to them you know we get frustrated it's like why aren't why aren't you getting this and yeah. it's like well that's not going to speak well to them you know yeah. so um we just follow the simple truth and listen to the holy spirit and that's yeah and i mean so last thing i'll say hopefully um I was reminded of a verse that says, if you can't love a brother who you can see, how can you love a God who you can't see? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, this is... An, I'm going to watch the word I use. I don't have a better one. This is the Lord's proving ground right now. For those who are going to learn to love like he loves, mm -hmm. and those who aren't. You know, we have flesh and blood brothers and the people around us who are going to annoy us, do things we don't like, things like that, get on our nerves, not listen to anything we say. And yet it's all, it's a word I've been using a lot, an opportunity to learn how to love like he loves. Mm -hmm. To be able to, I mean, it's literally an invitation from the Lord saying, come up higher. Come love like I do. See, take I'm taking you out of an earthly perspective into a heavenly perspective where you're seated. We're seated in the heavens. Mm. Every opportunity we get or every <laughs> issue in life, we get the opportunity and the chance to go, okay, Lord, how are you seeing this? Yeah. Literally seeing from an entirely different realm. And I think that's beautiful. And I think that's, that's what makes like, that's why I want to keep pushing it because like, I want to keep talking about unity. I want to keep talking because I want to see the more I talk about it, the more I know my mind's going to be focused on it. The more I'm going to go out and be ready for someone who like usually might have gotten on my nerves to let the Lord show me the perspective and then give me the love to love in that moment. And then I'll have that perspective. And then what we're talking about won't be talk on a talk show, on a podcast, on a Facebook video. I wanted to spur and like turn into seeds. Like we're all planting seeds yeah. in each other. Yeah. And hopefully those who are listening, they're planting seeds in them and they're going, what? Oh man. So, cause like the reason unity gets so hard is because we're selfish. We're inconvenienced by others. Yeah. I've been there. I've been inconvenienced by others, but now it's very convenient because I'm like, man, this is an opportunity for me to grow, <laughs> for me to see more like my father. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Let's do this thing. I mean, that's, that's what he wants us to do because the devil gets scared then. He's like, we have to be very careful how we approach this one. The opportune <laughs> times become less and less for him because he's like, Damn. literally everything we throw at them, they are somehow <laughs> <laughs> turning it and seeing it from God's perspective. This is very scary. Let's go away from them for a little bit. Look for a, a better opportune time. But the more they touch us, the le they don't have any offer. Then there comes a place where they say, just like Jesus, the devil comes, but he has nothing in me. Hmm. He has no opportunity, no chance. It's finished. It's a finished work. And, <laughs> and he's just like, I can't mess with that anymore. <laughs> that guy's just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh gosh, this is too much. <laughs> and that's that's but. God wants that on a large scale. He doesn't. Yeah, he, he doesn't want any of us to turn into, you know, big platform speakers. He wants this just like an infection to get around to everyone, a little leaven to leaven all the dough, so that we can all grow in this unity. 
Yeah. And it not just be talk. But let us not love. This is John, John like one or two. One, first John chapter two. Um, let us not love in word only, but let us love in deed as well. Yeah. And so like our words are good, but they must be seeds towards action. Yeah, we've got to be like the Father, where our word does not return to us void. Yes. Where when we say something, we make it happen. Yes. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Yeah. All right. I got something. Okay. I've been sitting on it in a minute. Um, it's going to be a short statement, but I, th- I find it interesting. The ultimate form of unity is unity within ourselves. So, disunity, internal, is double-mindedness. So, this isn't a complete thought. It's not a complete thought. I just wanted to say it anyways, because it just came to me today. It's not something I thought about before before we started doing this show. But what is the, the opposite of unity is division. Mm-hmm. Division is die. Vision is two visions. Yeah. Uni is one. So internal unity is really unity with the vision that God's given you. And then if you deviate from that vision, then you're in internally in disunity. Mm-hmm. And then like we can't receive anything from God because a double-minded person mm. is unstable in all of his ways. Yeah. I feel like one day I'll have more to that. That's just what I was thinking just now. So. Well, it's like you love others as you love yourself, and you have to receive and know. You have to know Christ, mm-hmm. receive that love. But it's like you can back that up, like with psychology. We don't have to, but we can. I would love to one day. <laughs> like, well, it's like there's a lot out there where it's like people's own insecurities they will project in how they interact with other people how they judge other people because it's like we we would we think that other people are going to respond the way that we would yeah but i mean everybody's different but that's just that's just how we think because it's like well that's how I would do that, a rational person. So <laughs> that's how this person's gonna act. But it's like if I am conflicted within myself, it's gonna reflect in how I interact with other people. Mm-hmm. So. You got anything? One last, last, last thing. <laughs> Like my dad now. That's <laughs> gonna say uh, closing part of the sermon. This is typically how I go, anyways. But, um, it says I give you a new command: love one another, just as I have loved you. You must also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. How do you evangelize the world? Love those who are already of the faith. Hmm. Yeah. Evangelism is not outreach. There was, when I was at an old church, like I, the church I was at previously, like I was a part of the beginning of that church when it was planted. And we grew, the, the college age kids were the, was the biggest section of the church. And it was because we really loved each other. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sort of being reunited with some of those people right now, and mm-hmm. we're starting to hang out again. We've all gone our own ways over the years, but we would go out in public, and there were people from other churches that had been in church their whole life were considering leaving their church and coming to ours just because it was obvious how much we loved each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. It makes me think of John 17. I'm pulling it up. While she's pulling that up, I'll make clarification of my statement okay uh uh what i say um oh yeah, it's not only outreach so just those evangelists out there who are like you gotta reach the world <laughs> reach the gospel <laughs> to the lost get get what i'm saying thank you yeah <laughs> context yeah
Uh, John 17, starting 22. I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in, I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And... I don't know, it's just, it's making me think of that. I sang it as a kid, but it's like, they will know we are Christians by our love. And it's like, it's like if we're claiming that this is love and this is a family, but then when people look at us and there's dysfunction, it's like, well, then what you're saying is true doesn't actually work. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we have to, we have to love each other and there can't be confliction within ourselves. And how we treat other people. We just have to. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all want to go round three next week? I do. Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to we're gonna dive deeper next week. Maybe some more we can get people to send us questions that they have about unity. Yeah. yeah. And then answer some of that. That way we can further the discussion. Yeah. We can get those. Send us questions, give us comments, and we will respond to them. Yep. Chad, you're it. <laughs> Praying us out or something? Yep. Uh, God, I just thank you that external unity is unity with you God this you want us to be one with one another the way that we're one with Christ the way that Christ is one with you and it's just love that's really all it is it's just it's just letting you love people through us choosing love and not choosing self and selfishness so God I just thank you for bringing your entire body into unity. I know this is something that's happening and I just thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 There you have it, everybody. If you want, you can go over to patreon.com slash be a light. You can support us there, help make the show run smoothly. We also have some really cool merch that you can get. We got some awesome t-shirts and hoodies. It's going to be winter soon. Winter is coming, as someone once said. So you can check all of that out. <laughs> check all of that out. Support us. All of that money goes back into the ministry and everything. Our show, all that good stuff. Support it. Make it happen, Captain. And you'll be fly and chic and on fleet. On fleet. <laughs> like a big truck. <laughs> It's late and it's been a long day. Don't judge. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) We hope that you've had an awesome time with us. We definitely had an awesome time with you. This has been Zach and Amy, Shad and Judah. Have a blessed week. Oh, yeah. (laughs)